What is up YouTube? I made a video about the languages that you should learn or could learn in 2023 and how to pick them. The thing that kind of provoked me to make this video is now that you have an idea of what languages there are, what's the difference between learning your first language versus learning your fifth or 10th or whatever language. And so I wanted to dive into the big difference between what you should focus on whenever you're learning your first language and then how you should evolve that into learning your fourth, fifth, sixth language. Let's jump into it. What I think in learning your first language, you should focus on syntax. So figuring out, translating what you want to have happen into a language that the computer can understand, which is gonna be whatever language you're learning. So JavaScript, TypeScript, Rust, Ruby, Python, whatever you're learning, you should focus on syntax and exactly how you can tell the computer what you need it to do. As you're doing that, you will also come across a lot of the ecosystem that is in your, whatever your programming language is. So if it's Rust, you're gonna be learning about Cargo. And if it's JavaScript or TypeScript, then you're gonna be learning about Yarn or NPM and how exactly to pull dependencies into your application, how to build it. You're gonna to need to understand how to install, update, and remove those dependencies. You'll also need to figure out how to do a production build. So, you know, build something and try to get it all the way through to production. In doing that, you know, if if you're doing a JVM app, then you're going to be making a fat or a skinny jar, depending on what decade you're in, maybe. Then you need to figure out how you're going to deploy your app so that other people outside of just you on your local machine can start using it. And so you'll probably dig into things like AWS or Docker or Vercel, depending on what ecosystem you're in. Start to learn that. Don't feel like you have to know everything because each one of those is its own separate discipline. Get something working. Don't worry about learning everything about it, but stay curious and dig into the pieces that are interesting for you. In doing any of that, you're going to need to understand version control. Any company is going to version control their software. And if you're working on any open source software, you're going to need to understand version control. Usually this is Git. If you're working on other things, it may be like SVN or some other like crazy thing. But learn Git, learn how to use it, learn how to use it on your own stuff so that whenever you start working or start working with others, then you can use Git and push your changes and not blow away everybody else's changes. As you're learning like the different syntax and exactly how things work within your language, you're gonna start to develop the different concepts. And this is where you can elevate your learning and focus on things that will translate to other languages and other disciplines. So these are your core concepts. Concepts are things like data types, control structures, object-oriented or functional programming paradigms, input output, common algorithms that are pervasive in both of those disciplines, and then refactoring. So within data types, what I mean is lists, arrays, hash maps, or maps in whatever language you're using. All of those are different data types, and they map to different ways to store your data and how to, how to manipulate it and use it in whatever way. So most applications are a glorified ETL or extract transform load. So you're taking data from one place, you're transforming it and then you're loading it, you're, you're displaying it. So think about this in a web page where you're taking information out of a database, you're transforming it into HTML and you're loading it into the browser. Any application can be thought of in this way. You can think of backend applications. Any of those need to have different data types to know how to best get the data from one place into another place. So for control structures, these are if statements, switch statements or if else statements, things like that, that you're gonna conditionally execute some logic, and this is the crux of programming. You wanna take some kind of input, run it through some logic, and then have that output present. And you wanna have the computer do that. So your control structures are the way to accomplish that, and usually you loop over things. So I have a list of data, and I wanna loop over it, and I wanna apply some logic over it. That's all control structures and something that you should learn. Next up is object-oriented or functional paradigms. Each of them has its own discipline and set of things that come into play. For object-oriented programming, you really wanna do composition over inheritance. So you can compose things kind of like Lego bricks, and that way you can you know, have something be greater than the sum of its parts. You'll inevitably run into inheritance, which has good cases, but mostly people dog on it and say bad things about it because it's so easy to screw it up. So whenever you can figure out composition and then leave inheritance for another day. Also in object oriented programming is polymorphism. And so for this, you want something to act like another thing. So maybe you have you know a class that's animal and you want it to act like a dog. 
Well, polymorphism lets you kind of adhere to those common APIs, and that's how you get, you know, back to some of the control structure stuff. Using polymorphism allows you to eliminate if statements. So you just use the right class, or you use the right object, for whatever you know case that you're in in object oriented programming there's a ton of design patterns so you know I'll, I'll post a link in the in the bottom here but there's all kinds of things like facade or decorator or factory there's all kinds of different things i'm not saying you should learn all of them and memorize them but you should at least be familiar with them and know how to look them up because you're gonna have questions on how do i do this certain thing and a lot of those patterns are best practices for how to take you know some kind of a thing that you know how to do and transform it into a certain output. For functional programming, if you really want to get into the science of it, you can look up monads and currying. It gets pretty deep into kind of the logic and different you know function calls and, and different ways to compose functions. It's really cool whenever you grok it, but it takes a while to figure out what the heck is going on. So for functional programming, no, again, it's kind of like composing things, right? You're taking these Lego bricks and you're plugging them all together to get some output, which in the Unix operating system, you have all these commands that all output strings and then take in strings. So you can do a bunch of things where you chain different commands and get some cool behavior. So functional programming is meant to do just that. Inevitably, you're gonna have to write to or read from files. And so this is where input output comes into play. This is where a lot of processing comes into play. So anytime you call out of your program and into like reading a file or talking to a database, those calls are expensive. So keep in mind when you should do IO and try and limit them to a small set so that you don't have an application that just runs forever. Some common algorithms you'll inevitably run into are sorting, searching, so something like binary search or string manipulation. Like any exercise you do online through like Code Warrior or something like that will have you do string manipulation so you're taking some kind of a string and transforming it in a certain way and have an output. So string manipulation, searching and sorting are really good to know. There's tons of different algorithms. A lot of the languages implement them for you and will actually switch algorithms depending on the size of the input that it takes. But if you're curious and want to dig further, dig into those. The last thing I want to touch on is refactoring. And so this is the way that you take your code today and you make it a little bit nicer and easier to work with and easier to change in the future. What you have is you, know, you want to keep the output of that system the same. You want to change the internal structure so that you don't break it. So think of this like, you know, you have one file which has a ton of code in it and you want to break it up into multiple files but you want it to do the same thing. Then you can use refactoring. There's a ton of really awesome books. I'll link a couple in the description, but check those out uh, if you wanna level up your refactoring skills. Before we move on to learning about your fifth language and what you should apply, hit that subscribe button so that you know I can make more videos about programming languages and whatnot. So if you like the video, hit that like button and let's talk about our fifth language. So if you're learning your fifth language, you probably have a general idea about control structures, data types, and the other things that I've listed. If not, go check those out. See how you can apply and understand those core concepts so that you can see how the new language that you're checking out applies to all those and what the differentiators are for that language. You know, you're gonna be learning syntax, always gonna be learning syntax because inevitably we're translators as programmers. We're going to be taking some kind of set of requirements and we're going to be translating it into some syntax so that the computer can understand and then usually there's either a some kind of a compile or other thing that takes that and makes it into bytecode understand the syntax you'll probably get a lot of, of benefit because you don't have to relearn how if statements or switch statements or some of the, some of the control flow or data structures work but you're gonna have to know what makes that language special and I wanna get into this a little bit more. So first off, you should understand why you wanna learn this language. Is it just for fun? Is it something you wanna learn for work? Something you have to learn for work? If you understand that, then you can understand where to focus. If it's for fun, then write a few fun things. Like don't focus on writing like a markdown parser if you hate looking at markdown. Try something new, try something that you haven't done before so you can see how the language flexes and what is really good about it. A lot of times programmers that are working in functional systems or are working in object oriented systems wanna learn the opposite. So let's say you're working in Java and you wanna learn functional stuff. So maybe you pick up Kotlin or maybe you pick up Haskell. Whenever you do that, you're gonna be able to learn some of those other paradigms in that language. Again, that comes back to core concepts. And so if you learn that, even though it's in another language, you can apply that learning to the language that you're already in. 
you can write functional style programming in other languages like Java, and you don't have to completely go ham on doing really crazy stuff in those languages, but hey, you're gonna learn and you're gonna be able to apply those core concepts back to the languages that you're working in already. Understand why you're learning them and how you can leverage that learning into what you're doing today. If you have other ideas or things that you wanna note for learning your first or your fifth language, definitely leave it in the comments. Thank you again for watching the video. And here are a couple of suggestions for your video and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, come on. You watched the whole thing, just subscribe already. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.